Ted. What's up? How you doing, buddy? Great. I am Casey Reuter. I am the director of strategy and partnerships here at Tomorrow Lab. Wow, what does that mean? It, it's very vague. We're not really <laughs> sure. <laughs> if you want to work with us, you talk to Casey. I'm the gatekeeper to these two. Today we are tearing down these wireless earbuds from Firo. Yes, we are. Firo. Firo. So Casey, you've tried these, right? I have. How do they sound? So they sound, they sound okay. They're not, they don't have the most volume that okay. you, you would want. But the actual pairing and just wearing experience is far better than, sorry, Apple, your AirPods. Um, wow. Okay, why? Because they fit in my ear. Got they it. don't <laughs> fall out. The only issue that I'm seeing so far besides the sound quality is a little bit tinny. Yeah. is that uh, they don't always connect to each other. And that's something I've heard about a lot of truly wireless earbuds. Um, but they do have a neat trick, which is when you want to pair them together, you just like touch them and then they start doing their little sync dance. Huh. Uh, and sometimes it works. That's cool. One kind of amazing thing about the AirPods is that, you know, they use this really nice metal bezel on the bottom as the contact point mm. to initiate the charging. These, on the other hand, are just using pogo pins that are clearly on the base. I found that they don't seat very well all the time. And in fact, I think I opened it once and I noticed that one of them just wasn't connected. Yeah, you have to... And you have to kind of jiggle it around yeah. until you get the light. Yeah, that's really hard when you're using uh, pogo pins and magnets to keep things onto the pogo pins. You tend to have to require a really large magnet to get consistent contact. Uh, if I were to give them like a little bit of design advice, I'd build in a rib into the roof here so and put a secondary large magnet or latch here so that when this closes it just shoves them onto those pushes pins. it down mm -hmm. that's nice hey can we take these apart let's take them apart Please. yeah all right well that's easy you take this little nubby nub off the tippy tip and you don't even need to be an engineer to do that hi guys this is Pepin. while we're tearing this down can you like and subscribe Okay, so we got a two-part enclosure. You can see the little seam line here going around the outside. And we tried like pulling it apart and tried spudging it. And it's really hard to do because you can't get a good grip on it. So we're gonna use a vise. And this is a very quick tear down. We're gonna go boobity boobity boop. It goes pop. Boom. We get our fingernail in there and you just pry it open like a lobster shell. <laughs> All right. And there's the guts. So uh, we have uh, the Fira uh, headphone uh, torn apart here. And so uh, it's a simple two-part housing. It's got a magnet that keeps it in place. And we also think it might be used for pairing, be like, oh look, simultaneous magnet event. Well, there's two PCBs, a red pill and a blue pill. Um, and they look pretty identical. Um, you have the really small Bluetooth antenna. It's a chip antenna. Um, all the IC magic happening here. This is the microphone at the bottom. On the back side, there's the charging circuitry for the battery. And this little coil on top links to this foil tape. Mm -hmm. What does the foil tape do? It's for capacitance, so they, they can see you touch the outside of the housing. And that way you can do these like doop, doop, doop things. Um, oh, also in the housing, there's this little tiny uh, light pipe, which works pretty well, um, although you can really see the discrete LEDs through it, which is not our favorite for light pipes. We want like a nice blurred, uh, consistent light. Um, how big is that battery? It is 50 milliamp hours, and which that's... is double what you get in the Apple AirPods. And then uh, I guess the, the thing that makes this all what it is, is the voice coil or the speaker. Um, and that's this tiny module right here. And as you see when that magnet jumps at it, it's got its own neodymium ring around the outside edge. And then there's this incredibly tiny, thin membrane here, which has a, these like little pleats in it. And that is what vibrates back and forth. And glued to that is this teeny tiny copper coil, which has two wires coming back to the room here. And so what they're able to do is they run current through that teeny tiny copper coil um, and it allows us to vibrate back and forth. And then I can't really tell, there's this tube in the center. Mm -hmm. Hmm. And hmm. I don't really know what that does. I would have thought that it would connect air to the backside of this to allow them to create that resonant chamber we discussed before. But then there's like a stopper here. So don't totally know. Could it be that they're just using a part that they use for something else that already had a hole in it? 
and they just decided to not redesign it? That's a distinct possibility. Interesting. Hmm. Just about everything they're doing here, they could buy off the shelf. The headphone module piece right here, that's a stock piece that they're buying. Their antenna stock. But, you know, it kind of has to be because these are um, $50 retail price headphones. They Mm -hmm. can't be customizing every last uh, everything. Mm -hmm. You have all these things, Mm. but the sound isn't great. Mm. How would you redesign it so that you do can you can create that resonant chamber so that the sound can be bassier, fuller, can block out Not screaming right. babies. Yeah, right. but yeah. I think in order to improve the sound, we would add the necessary plastic geometry inside to um, have the sound driver interface with that. The whole point is that you want to position the the moving um, drum over a larger volume of air, mm-hmm. and that's going to give you the lower frequencies of sounds. Mm-hmm. And I think the way Apple's doing it is, I believe they're, they're, I think this is their microphone, and I'm pretty sure that these pieces, they're either microphones or they're bass ports, which is part of that, creating that chamber. Right. Um, but as we noted when we took this apart, there's no ceiling in the housing, and there appears to be no air path or uh, membrane between this tiny speaker module and here. And so that means they're really not leveraging this volume to create any kind of sound. Um, uh, we could do some work around that where, you know, you can find ways to port air into this area. And then what it basically does is it makes the entire headphone vibrate. And that, of course, leads to much bigger waveforms, much bigger sound. Kind of like the effect that an acoustic guitar has. Air can come in and it resonates the entire chamber Just of the guitar. Like an acoustic guitar. Uh-huh. There you go. All right, guys, this was fun. Casey, thanks for joining Mm -hmm. us. Um, Don't forget to like and subscribe and let us know in the comments what we should tear down next. Bye. Bye. Do you want another take? (laughs) I can do a great ear. (laughs) Hi, guys. This is Pepper. (laughs) Well, we're tearing this down. Can you like and subscribe? (laughs) The future. (laughs) The future where everything is raw. Can you do like a chipmunk voice? Like, hi, guys, this is Pepper. (laughs) While we're doing this tear down, like and subscribe. (laughs) That was Casey. <laughs> Hi guys, this is Casey. <laughs> 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 <laughs>